going to be so much pressure on um, on government, you know, from from uh, you just on your pension funds alone, you know, as they sink further into the red, and you've got retirees who are promised these, you know, indexed income streams um, at a certain level, and suddenly that's looking a bit bit wobbly. I just yeah, I just think I can see uh, that that um, cohort of pension re retirees, pension dependent retirees just getting up in arms uh, and you've got your midterms coming and then you know your presidential elections and you know um, yeah I can just see a lot of pressure coming there just on that from that front alone with rising yeah. and with rising costs and the shrinking incomes. Yeah. Yeah you're right. Mm. I mean the only other trick they have prior to that is to redefine uh, CPI <laughs> and strip out rents and strip out <laughs> energy. And or you know annualize it or normalize it or what do they what do they used to call it the hedonic adjustments, mm -hmm. uh, you know and that is true you know you're already seeing that uh, at the household level in the United States where people are making choices of, they're substituting expensive beef and chicken with less expensive spam, you know mm -hmm. it's it, and and that's the political element that's the social element that's that it started with a bad monetary policy mistake. Which, which itself was based on the idea that these people should and could know the correct price of money to manage the, the economy, which, which is an incredible act of hubris. But now it, people, it's filtered down to the household level where people are having to make decisions about how to spend their money on things that are going up in price. And you know, in the Western world, there's plenty of calories that are still available on the shelf, right? You know, you, you go into a few stores and sometimes they don't have this or they don't have mm -hmm. that, but no, no one's starving yet because of food inflation. But there may be some people, but you know, it's not, it's not a uh, Tunisia back mm -hmm. in when, whenever it was uh, 2005, mm -hmm. 2006. It, that's the one thing I would look for Vern is, is to look what's happening in the middle East and North Africa Southeast Asia and countries that are halting the export of, of palm oil like they did in mm -hmm. uh, Malaysia, you know, th those are things are direct consequences of the monetary experiment that's been going on since 2011. So um, expect to see a lot more of that uh, social instability caused by rising prices, which for five or 6 billion people in the world is, you know, a day to day issue. It may Correct. not be for us, mm. but it, it is for a lot. Yeah, well, I've read somewhere that um, you're only three unserved meals away from civil unrest or war. You know, it's a, um, yeah, people go hungry. There's a lot of, you know, you yeah, just, and, and they they will tell to take to the streets. Yeah, I, I can't. Remember. I've heard a variation of that too. It's it was either Lenin or or a, a, an American science fiction writer named Robert Heinlein who said, "Civilization is only seventy two hours away from anarchy," <laughs> mm -hmm. and that you know that was even fifty years ago or a hundred years ago it was true. But now we find out with really long supply chains and logistics networks, when your groceries come when, when you're like there in the UK. Your produce comes from Spain. Here, our produce comes from Central America and Mexico. Well, how does it get here? It gets here on a refrigerated truck. Well, what does the truck run on? Not sunlight. It's not a solar-powered mm -hmm. truck. It's a diesel-powered truck. Where does the diesel come from? Well, it has to be refined. Where's the refinery? How much is oil? You know, all of those things are connected. So getting food from point A to point B uh, is going to be a lot harder uh, as energy prices are sticky, around $100 a barrel for oil. And that's not even including what we know is happening with the price of fertilizer and the, mm -hmm. the availability of fertilizer, you know. But we just don't, you know, it's an interesting issue to talk about because most people are so far removed from where their food is either killed or grown that we don't think that it about how it got there or how long it took to get there to grow it or to to sow the crop or to raise the animal and to slaughter it and get it there. We only notice it when it's not there. And I mm -hmm. think we're going to start noticing that a lot more this summer.